Hello, hello. How's everyone out there? Uh, Friday, finally. Holy shit, I feel, I feel like I've been through a war. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Fucking this week. This week has been uh, long and hard, like this bitch, yo. And um, I'm glad it's over, man. I, I, I'm glad it's over. Not, not because of the channel, because of. You know, everything else. I got a lot of stuff going on with the cars, got a lot of stuff with work. Um, and then this, on top of that, just trying to keep it going, trying to make something happen. You never know what can happen. So, you know, it's just uh went to the gym really early this morning. So I think that's what's doing it, you know, doing it. I get I get kind of on the tired side when I go to the gym early, but you know, just keep going. Fuck it, do the thing. So today we're talking um on the YDBT Daily is how has remote tuning changed the performance and automotive world? Let me let's be honest, guys. I had no idea this was even a thing. When I bought my 2011 Mustang, didn't even know it existed, didn't know what to do, didn't know what to think about it. I thought, how can they do that? How is it possible? Then I did a little research, probably about a month's worth of research, not much. And I went, oh, okay. I understood how they were able to do what they do. But then you, when you're in it and when you're in it and you're, you know, oh, it's notifying myself that I'm on. Thank you. Appreciate that phone. <laughs> If, uh, if you're in the business, do you wonder how it changed everything? Meaning if there was no remote tuning, would somebody in shit ass Oklahoma be able to get their car fucked with? Would PK in the house, um, would someone in, you know, fucking Alaska can get tuned as long as they have some know-how, some tools and a nice long road to data login. It kind of made dinos useless, right? Like the only reason you need a dyno is for Delta, you know, to actually make sure the difference in parts uh, are, are making a difference, how to measure, you know, like uh, if you put a degree more timing, how much more different is it? You can maybe play with cam timing, but in, in terms of watt tuning, honestly, it kind of made a lot of dynos. I don't want to say useless because I think dyno is a very important tool, but it made it less needed, right? If you had a long ass road in Oklahoma, nothing going on in shit ass Oklahoma, some place named by, to some, you know, over, you know, some place that's named, uh, because of like an Indian guy or something, some, some fucking shit hole somewhere. And you don't know of a performance shop around you. You don't know of a shop that's worth anything, but you can work on your own shit. You can email some guy and that guy can get you taken care of mind blowing. It brought performance to you and not to the shop that you're getting stuff worked at. Now, then another thing has happened, right? Shops have made it so that they don't have to have a tuning, a person, a tuner, sorry, a tuner on the payroll. They can just build shit, have Lund tune it or whoever they wanted to, tune, to get it tuned. Get on the dyno for about a half a day, done, bada bing, move on to the next job, as opposed to sitting on the dyno for a week and a half, dialing in a combo, diagnosing it, yada, 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 yada. So how has remote tuning changed the performance world in your eyes? I, shop specifically, I wonder what Pete, something like PK Auto, SK Performance, uh, Beefcake Racing, things like that. How did it change? How did it help? How did it mold, change the automotive landscape, the performance and racing automotive landscape? Because right now we can tune cars in Colombia, Saudi Arabia. You don't have to travel anywhere uh, as long as they have wide bands, as long as they're Coyote cars. Um, you, we can we tune worldwide. I've tuned cars in uh, Fox, Switzerland, uh, England, uh, Germany, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Qatar, Qatar, Russia, um, Korea. I've tuned a couple of cars in Korea, a couple of cars in Australia, a couple of cars. I mean, pretty crazy how it's possible and how has it changed in your eyes because when you're in it you don't realize you're in it and then when you get out of it you go wow what would it be without it now truth be told when i had a fox body i never even tuned that car tuning was timing um iac the right mass airflow housing size for the right injector and party timing with your fucking you know with, with your distributor and uh have at it and nitrous and supercharger and go go for it. But then, you know, 
there was ways of fine tuning that combo too. I just never got into that. Then when I went to carburetors, you don't need anything. You don't need a goddamn thing. You just say, hey, here's a screwdriver and some time, some points <laughs> and timing and have at it. There is your tune because there's less things that can go wrong. Simplicity is bliss. So that's why I think I'm going to head back to carburetors on the Fairmont specifically just to get a taste of what it used to be like to see if it's more satisfying in terms of hobby. Right now, I get in my car and I can't do a goddamn thing to it. It runs good, has a check engine light, check the codes, change sensors. That's all about it after the tune is dialed in. So it has changed, quote unquote, hot rotting. Long are the days where guys are under the hood, finding tune, fine tuning stuff. If I'm under the hood, I'm replacing shit. And, you know, most shops have become parts replacers instead of diagnosers. But, you know, oh, my God. Who the fuck? Jesus. What? Shut up. You got to love this. You got to love apartment living. People start yelling. And I'm like, well, what is wrong with you? Why do you need to yell outside? Do you guys ever meet people that have their fucking, they, they have an outside voice everywhere they go? Americans specifically. Americans specifically have a fucking loud fucking outside voice. And they don't just know how to talk like a normal person. Fucking idiot. All right, guys, I say hi to the people here. You guys can probably tell I'm tired. <laughs> uh, JD Swag, Bader, Tony, Tony, uh, Ryan Rodriguez, Eliza's S550. S Bing Bong says, what's up, Alex? Uh, Ryan, already got Ryan Rodriguez. Yeah, Ryan Rodriguez. D Damon, Darren Harper, Nine Toes Racing, Eliza, Jared Wells, the winner. Jared Wells has the most comment on yesterday's video. Jared Wells, get me your information. Hit me up on Instagram and see where Dome I Got Cookies can send you some cookies. So just send me your Instagram or something. I'll send them your Instagram and you guys can do everything on your own. But you win the four cookies from Dome My God Cookies. Where is the logo? Where's Dome My God Cookies? Do I even? I'm so stupid. There you go. Here's the logo. The Dome My God Cookies logo. Ryan SVT, Rare SVT sign. That's a funny name, <laughs> Rare SVT sign. Giuliani, 508 Josh, you don't say 508. Um, Wit SVT, Cluster, BM, Mr. Mustang, Boxy Luxury, Love Boost, Preston Stanford, GTO Mike. GTO Mike, I got LS guys watching my shit. Or L, yeah, LS guys. Uh, Diego Flores, uh, Ali, Ali Al Husani. What's up, bro? <laughs> It'd be funny if he's just like a normal guy, but his name is Ali Al Husaini. Fast Hippo ZL1. Am I the only Alaska in here? Usually, no, there's a couple. There's a couple of homos in here. Bring your wood screw says you understood the assignment. Um, <laughs> Ariel Morales, Edward Martinez. Yo, but he's got a tube chassis. Shit, man. Now he's got a tube chassis with his Fox body. Boosted 10 R80. Greg M. 305 F150 R8. What's up, Alex? I've been remote to all my vehicles, GM Ford, etc. Barely have ever put them vehicles on dinos unless recommended by the shop or tuner. Okay. Let's talk to PK Auto Design here. It says, Lund Remote Tuning has allowed for my company to grow and thrive. It allows us to do install work or build the car and then know with confidence our tuner has our back and helps us dial it in. That is a nice way of looking at it. I, you know, I guess I never, I never even thought of it that, that way because I'm on this end of things. I'm on, I'm on this end of things. I'm, I'm under the assumption as a remote calibration specialist that you know what you're doing and Unfortunately, my job has become sending a tune and then adjusting the tune to talking a lot to the person. Take the screwdriver out of your toolbox. Put it in. If it's flat, get the flat screwdriver. If it's Phillips, get the Phillips star-shaped or cross-shaped screwdriver. Put it in the slot. Turn it to the left to loosen it. Turn it to the right to tighten it. Like It's become that spoon-fed. And I think that's where some of the frustration comes in because if we knew, if, if a lot of people actually knew what they were doing, the back and forth would be less and my job would be actually very, very easy. But as it is now, we have become remote diagnosers and have to chit chat and then talk and then make sure you don't run the nitrous tune on the NA tune. Oh, okay. Then you get the log back, car blowed up, and they, I'm like, it's all 30 degrees because you ran the NA tune with the nitro setup. What's the problem with that? And I'm like, uh oh. So I, I think for PK performance or PK auto design, they understand what they're doing and they just go, we don't got to worry about the tuning. Just build the car, get it out of here. But when it comes to on our end of things, for every one of PK auto design, there's four or five people that have never built the car before know that they just want to shove cold airs on and they think the tuning is just this magical thing that happens that fixes all of your fuck ups, all of your issues that you don't really have to know how to do anything that the tune will fix everything. And that's just not the case. 
Um, I use the dyno for safe, safely high horsepower pulls. I get that. Street logs on low boost. Exactly. 100%. You got that. You got it. Dyno to me is a remote street when you want to dial in big boy combos that you generally don't have grip in. Like the GT500 cannot make pulls on the street. It just blazes tire. <clears throat> Gons of the Great. Second shift racing says it's not yet raining today. Boy, they're talking about hunting again. Um, people just want the world to know about their life. People just want the world to know about their life. That's why... That's why I'm, um, they, tell, they all, wow. People just want the world to know about their life. That's why I'm, um, they, tell all the time. I'm just reading what he said. If you get a headache, that's on you. Remote tuning is the best thing since sliced bread. <laughs> um, and then he says they yell. So Mendoza's Coyote fixed it after instead of actually proofreading his actual comment. Sup, I like the video even though I had to watch ads first. Look. I am keeping the ads. I'm keeping the money. I saw my views go down because I think people got sick and tired of seeing ads every five or 10 minutes. Sorry, that's how I make money on this channel and support my my hobby. And uh, if y'all don't want to watch the commercials, you pay the extra $8 a month and it's like or 11 and no commercials. I mean, it's not that hard. Um, all time outside voice isn't an American thing. My wife, Ty, and my side, my side. I like how he's like, my side chick. My side chick is Korean. I bring your plug to the family gatherings. <laughs> this motherfucker. Does London unlock married SCT devices? If so, how much? No, SCT does. We don't. Um, we don't fuck with SCT in any way, shape, or form. Gotcha. They look good. Love boost. Okay. Um, John that used to run Speedworks was a friend of ours. John Wilburn, Jonathan Wilburn. I know for sure he's having lunch tuning their cars to help cut back on overhead and stress for their shop. Jonathan Wilburn is, was, he's not in the car game anymore, but he's a good fucking dude. I, if, if you're going to, in the, in the Carolina area, and if he was still running the show, I don't know much about whoever bought his shop recently, but Wilburn was a fucking G. I love him. Um, my 410 Windsor Fox with an E85 carb should be out soon. The engine is at the machine shop as we speak. Can't wait to see your Fox too. Oh, it'll be a while. It'll be a while, can I be frank? Because I'm thinking it'll be at least um, probably a year. I'll be honest. It's, it's going to be a process because trans, motor, front half, and back half. I'm not going to wait long. Hey, I love people. I love my friends. I am not going to be loyal to friends anymore. I am going to be loyal to me. So whoever can get my front half and back half done ASAP gets my money and do a good job. Uh, this loyalty delays your builds all the time. I recommend LUN to all my customers. Those who listen are much happier than those who don't. What's up, Alex? Did you talk to Complex Girl today? I did. <laughs> Trevor Gerfin says, what's up, Alex? Uh, what are your goals for 2022? My goals for 2022 are the following. Run sevens in the GT500 or sell it. That is number one goal for 2022. It's going to be cold. So I have January and February to run that seven. So get a diode or a whatever they call it um, on the uh, converter if need be. Try to get it into the sevens. I might have to tweak the suspension because it does big wheelies and I'm trying to lessen the wheelie so I can cut down on the 60 foot. But the car is missing a couple of tents and I'm going to try to find them and I haven't gotten to the track because honestly, it's a big deal to go to the track with that car. It, it requires people, like three people to make that car turn around. And I don't know three people that I trust or like. So when Lund does rentals, I go. Whipple tune on a Gen 2 with a 2.9, does it leave... A, lot to be desired also would benefit from a custom tune staying on 93 it'll you'll benefit from a custom tune for growth but drivability is pretty goddamn good whipple has access to all of the hot shit all the hot sauce all the stuff that ford has they have a relationship with ford so in terms of drivability i wouldn't expect a huge gain then the amount the ability to grow with us you know what i mean like let's say drivability is the same between us and, and whipple well, you can't shove YD1000, Z85, and a turns off fuel system with, with Whipple. You have to go to a custom tune. So I think that's the draw with us. Um, unfortunately, us LS guys don't have many email tuners that are worth anything. Narrowband O2s for the loss. Chris Buchaya. I understand. I definitely understand that because I used to work for VMP, and when a freaking two-valve tune would come through, I was on that car. For five or six revisions, when the Coyote 1,000 horsepower car was on revision three at the track, done. It made life a lot easier, no, wide bands. Are Coyotes King Daddy on the street? Um, Depends on your price range, right? I, I think lightweight LS cars are King Daddy on the street right now. King, uh, lightweight LS cars are King Daddy on the street. Why aren't there any more lightweight Coyote cars? 
cost, price. It's expensive to build a Coyote car. Coyote swap is going to run you about $25,000 by the time it's all said and done. If you do it properly with a badass motor, if you're going to just do the stock game, then yeah, you can, you can get into a swap in the, in the low four figures, low five figures, eight to $12,000. But if you want to talk about 11, 1200 horse, we're talking gen two or gen three and up built sleeved rods, pistons, cams, ported heads, turbo or nitrous, a turbo or a supercharger and a light Fox or a 240 or something really, really light. Um, right now you can get into a Fox for cheap money, throw a five, three or a four, eight or a six O in it with a big, you know, choo choo boy and have some fun. And Holly can tune it for you. Cause you're not tuning it just because you fucked the timing ramp. Doesn't mean a goddamn thing. Holly can tune it for you and you're going to run pretty, a pretty good number. So in terms of, I think, um, availability and price, I think the LS game right now in terms of price ha has a, an advantage over the coyote for sure. YouTube premium is steeply priced, but no ads is the best. Our coyote already got there. First car ever modified was my 85 RX seven with a 12, a 19, 20 years old, got the headers and Weber side draft installed at a shop, but tuned to myself with the different jets and emulsion tubes lost art. Oof. Boy, he just said some shit that confused the hell out of people. Second live, and I actually catch, and I'm actually working during the times you go live, so I always watch the replay. Brian Cassette says, how much power will my car make with your tune? <laughs> we'll take my answer off the air. Thank you. Stopping by to leave a like. <laughs> wow. Wow. I hope he's not serious. Um, if someone wanted to learn how to tune Coyote, what software would you recommend, and what steps should I take? Look. Oh, God damn it. My eyes are used to SCT software. Bang, 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 bang. I can make a tune on a Coyote on SCT in about a third of the time. It takes me on HP tuners. About a third of the time. Bang, 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 boom, bang, boom, done. But that's not an option anymore. So, you know, you, you, we have our own stuff. Um, and, you know, you, you, you evolve and change and work with what you got. But... Um, to learn on maybe HP tuners because the draw system, the drawing, meaning you suck out a file that you hope is open. Let's say you have an LS and you have an LS three car Camaro and, uh, you, 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 you go somewhere and get it tuned, right? You can draw out that file and then compare it to a stock file and see what changes were made. The why is going to be the biggest thing that you have to figure out. Why did I, ch why did he put that number there? Why did he change the clutch fill time to that? Why did he change the combustion limit table to that? Why is the map table touch? Why is the math off? Why, you know, so I think it's not that easy of an answer. I wish I could just tell you, oh yeah, use this, use that. I, I don't think that's an easy answer. If you have like a SCT pro racer package where you are able to tune your own car, they have a value file system. So on SCT, if you pull up, if you have a racer package, a pro racer package, which I don't know if they sell anymore, um, you can go in there and go, I have a 2011 Mustang and you go to the, you know, uh, little icon and uh, look into their value file system because SCT actually does some tuning on some vehicles, very, very minor stuff, nothing crazy. And you can literally have like a regular performance tune and see the difference into in, what they did. You have a differential report that you can pull up on the software and go, okay, this is the stock file versus the uh, tuned file. And okay, there are the differences. But again, the why, the why, and I can't get into the weeds as to why people change things. And you have to have access to everything that they change. Just because you have a pro racer package does not mean you have access to everything that has been changed on that car. It's, 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 I'm sorry. It's a, not an answer, but it's about the best answer I can give you. ¿Qué pasó? Alejandro says, Nawed Sadik. You know what's funny? Your name almost says suck dick, right? It says Nawed Sadik. <laughs> I just, I don't know. I find that funny. <laughs> oh, fuck. Can you give us some Mike Tyson? It's been a while. Okay, here's some Mike Tyson. Why not? It's Friday. Let's give you some Mike Tyson. You can't touch me. You're not man enough. I eat your asshole alive, you bitch. Fuck you, you hoe. Come and in my face. Fuck you, ass for that. Everybody. What? And again, if you guys don't know that clip, he was at a face-off with the Lennox Lewis fight. Some guy yelled, get him a straight jacket. And he goes, put your mother in a straight jacket, bitch. And then he just You can't touch me, you're not man enough. I eat your asshole alive, you bitch. Fuck you, you hoe. Come and in my face. 
fuck you ask for that? Everybody. It was great. I mean, the guy, the guy's a legend. <laughs> he's actually a smart dude. He's just off his rocker a little bit, but he's a smart fucking dude. Um, yes, John is a great dude. His partner and the main mechanic is still running the shop and their stand-up guy. I still highly recommend them. Okay. If the work is being done by someone who was there and there is some leftover knowledge and John can kind of be a consultant or whatever. Yeah. Carolina Speedworks in that area is the shop to go to, in my opinion. Um, how's the weather there, Mr. Flores? <laughs> Whoa, motherfucker. Pull up your phone, type in Palm Beach Gardens. And you can figure it out yourself. What's wrong with people? Well, this cold front over here is going to blah, blah, blah. And this one's going to... Oh, what the fuck am I, the weatherman? Um, go buy a Honda. Buy an emulator. Tune with free software. Blow that up about three times. Blow it up a few of your friends' cars. And there's your start. <laughs> Says Chris from the internet. What does Tyson do again, Alex? <laughs> what is wrong with people? Would installing a GT350 intake on an 18 be worth the expense? Is that going to be worth about 20 horsepower on the far end of the power band? Not just no. Fuck no. Maybe seven. Now, in my in my red car, I tested the stock 15, the 18, and the GT350. The GT350 made about seven more at the same peak that the 18 did. It wasn't like 20 more. No, 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 no. But it depends if it's boosted or not. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, we got a couple of people that paid. I almost got that pregnant emoji, says Trevor Gurfin. One more month. Yes, me. That means January. You guys will have the first of the year. We're going to have a bunch of pregnant man emojis, and I'll have to refresh the emojis. Brian Cassette said message failed. Perfect. And Arturo Amorcio gave me $5. Thank you very much for any donation that I get from you guys. I really appreciate it. It does go a long way, believe it or not. Um, Chris Buchaya says to uh, at love. NA game is pretty gay, but thankfully I'm around 600 wheel NA on my LS7 over the NA game. Going to go and boost. Hopefully it stays together. I am now starting to see guys being done with the NA game, but, but that doesn't mean you know shit. A lot of people are going, all right, I'm sick of the NA game. I'm going to go boost. Well, don't bring your NA bullshit over to the boost boosted game because a lot of guys in the NA game, just bolted on parts that the internet said worked. So they go, okay, now boost. I'm going to bolt it on. It should just work, right? I'm like, ah, you got to have some know-how. You got to diagnose some boost stuff. You got to know what a bypass valve is. You got to know what a, um, why, why a throttle body is more likely to fail on a boosted setup than a NA setup. All that stuff you got to, you got to be aware of. You can't just expect it to just work. There is some diagnosing that needs to happen. There's a, you know, you have a heat exchanger. You might have to burp the system on. There's a whole bunch of little things that are extra as opposed to NA, bolt shit on, run uh, tens and say you're King Daddy without a hood with bell axe and uh, bead locks with dumps on E85 or, M or M5. I mean, really, what's wrong with you? Is Beefcake in the chat today? I don't think so. Um, can you download a tune from LimeWire? Probably. I mean, if there's any um, peer-to-peer downloading service type, like it used to be like LimeWire or what, what, it was, what it used to be called before. What was it called before? Nero or whatever the fuck it was when Metallica was basically suing like dudes for having their songs. Um, not Nero. Is it Nero? What the fuck was it? There was I forget the name. I'm old. Um, trans break worth it for a Whipple F-150. Uh, you're not going to go any faster or cut a better 60. You will do, you will cut a better light. A trans break is not going to help you. Well, okay. Boost it is different. Let's say you can get leave on five pounds of boost. You're going to break shit. So, I mean, I would use it more to build a little boost and take off as opposed to to try to be really aggressive because you're going to break a lot of shit. So, yeah, be mindful of a trans break. But honestly, I would use that for more of a cutting a better light than to actually cut a better 60 foot. Napster, thank you. Fuck, I am so old. Um, anyone know if Whipple is still on four plus month back order, says Javi Luna. It's always amusing listening to you, reference timing, etc. Like saying 30 is a decent amount. Then I see my bike tunes at 40 <laughs> yeah i mean look if you guys have seven to five compression on your bikes yeah you might see a lot of timing if you have 11 to 1 or 12 to 1 gen 3 and up coyote uh, on e85 30 is about the most i'd give you 
It was called Napster, Napster, Napster. Beautiful. Um, it was. Same with Bear Share. 16 weeks currently. Javi Luna says PK out of design. So yeah, four month wait. Four month wait for a Whipple. Um, the Pirate Bay, Napster, Napster. Probably Javi. I've heard it's a long wait. Why? Why? Somebody from Whipple tell me why. And don't say supply chain issues. Because that means your shit is coming in from overseas. And why is your shit coming in from overseas? Why isn't it made in America? Right? Forget Whipple. Anybody that has supply chain issues in the manufacturing... Power by the hour does not have supply chain issues on the parts they control. Their bracket kits, their um, standoffs, their uh, pulley kits... Their swap parts that they have control of, those metal pieces, no supply chain issues, all made in USA. Now, when it comes to control packs and stuff like that, okay, I understand. They have no control. They don't make that part. They resell that part. But the parts they have control of, they show up and they're just there because they use local manufacturers. Jake sources them locally. No supply chain issues. I wonder why. Anyone selling a complete kit for a Gen 1 Coyote? Anyone want to buy one but hate waiting? LS Chevys are fast and all, but the LS Swap Chinese Turbo Tin Can Fox Bodies is the fastest. Yep, absolutely. That's what I say, right? In terms of price, you put a... Look, guys, my Coyote in the Fairmont is basically stock except rods and pistons. Nothing in that Coyote motor makes more power. Maybe the slightly ported heads. That's about it. That car's been 880s. I'm sorry, 870s. That's fast, fast. You know, if I had a Gen 2 motor, I didn't care about blowing up. It'll run the exact same number. Alex, is a single big turbo superior to a twin turbo? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Why, why, why do you want to? Why do you want to know that? Why, why do you want to know if a single is better than a twin? I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't care. It's a fucking turbo. I hate turbos. The only reason turbos are good is to run really billy badass numbers out of track. But in terms of what I do, drive around a lot, drive around the street, enjoy my life, not be under the hood all the time and not chase every record on the planet, superchargers are the way to go. Where's Bondo Bird on this? He's probably cutting a piece of metal that is totally sourced in the United States. <laughs> uh, 12 to 1 on the bike. Stock, stock on most is 12 to 1. Holy shit. Um, crazy made in USA with Chinese metal. Exactly. Uh, Alex, do you believe in ghost? <laughs> Alex, do you believe in ghosts? Like ghosts, like the paranormal? No, no. Oh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm an adult. What's wrong with you? No supply chain issues for the car cartels either. Right. How come the cartels are able to bring fentanyl and weed and cocaine? Like no problem. Homegrown, huh? Bought a Grip Tech pulley last night from Beefcake. Great company and a better deal than anywhere else. Beefcake for the win. PK Auto Design says, got to get back on this Twin Turbo Coyote rebuild. I'll catch a replay later. Have a good night, sir, and thank you for the help on Nico's Coyote today. Oh, I had no idea that was you, but um, I'm glad that everything's all set. Brother, you got to let me know that you guys are on that ticket just so that I remember because when I get in a zone, I, I just I have tunnel vision and I just sit there and hammer out tunes. I don't know who's who. Once I find out who's who, I go, oh, shit, you know, I... I don't, that, that's how you know I treat everyone the same because I don't know who I'm dealing with. I'm just treating you like another ticket. And that's probably better for me because it means that there's no favoritism on my part. Because if I knew it was Peaky Auto Design, I'd probably be like, all right, fuck everyone else. I'm going to fuck with them. <laughs> but thank you for the big donation. You didn't never have to give me $50, dude, $1, $2, $2 anything. I'll mention you guys. For the price of a Whipple stuff, it sure as hell would be made. In, in, for the price of Whipple stuff, it sure as hell should be made in the USA. It, what look i understand elect, elect like um electronics uh, <laughs> no i don't well fucking wire you can't get wire i mean what is on a whipple kit that is causing a delay rotors are they made here the case is it forged here is it is the foundry here yeah okay if it's all here then what's the fucking problem maybe it is california i will admit california is super fucked but if it's all made in the USA, why isn't it just being pumped out? And I'm that's going that that's that's for every supercharger manufacturer, every manufacturer, period. If you are a USA, you know, promote USA 
and you are having supply chain issues because of China parts, bro, shame on you. Is a twin turbo better than a single turbo? I mean, yeah, I'm like, well, it's got two turbos. Two's better than one. Because America and the cartels are the biggest consumers. <laughs> like, I love Brandon, but Brandon, I think, literally thinks that 10 PSI is 10 PSI is 10 PSI, regardless of twin, single, or supercharger. He's like, well, I probably took 27 PSI to run the number. I'm like, 27 PSI on a 4.5 liter Whipple that's being yanked by a motor versus 20 PSI from two turbos. Oh, 20 PSI is 20 PSI. I'm like, uh, I don't know how to explain it to get through him. I don't know how to explain it properly that it can So he understands it. I, I, I don't think it's possible. Thanks for the great content. Even being a cold bro, I try to catch a show every day, says Preston Stanford. Best mod I did to my car was, did the Eek 5 for MS3 plug and play? Okay. <laughs> Bondo Bird is probably missing gears right now. Yes, I can hear him right now. There's the rev limiter. Yes, he's missing third gear there. He's out there fucking around missing third gear. David Clunkerton finally made it for a live show. Happy Friday. Is this David Clunkerton that used to work for Vengeance that now works for Rouch? Is that the David Clunkerton? That guy's a good dude. Uh, the Hot Sauce says, well, yo. Uh, Dane Gonzalez says, it's the Cali tax. Lime Turtle says, they didn't just show a new prototype supercharger and they can't get orders. They didn't just show a new supercharger and they can't get orders out. Okay. I have heard truckers say that the ports in blue states are throttling back the loading and unloading where red state ports are working overtime. Ain't that some shit? One of my buddies thinks that it's a better idea to put a TBM brakes on his car to go faster for about three to $5,000 versus saving and buying boost in his 14 second car. Blows my goddamn mind. Wow, he wants to buy TBM brakes to go faster as opposed to just putting boost in it. Mind blown. Um, Chris Buchaya says, I bought a Paxton kit and it's been eight weeks so far. No word on when it's shipping, though the manufacturer is in SoCal, so that's probably the reason. Hey, 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 supercharger manufacturers, why the fuck are you in California? Magnuson, Whipple, Vortec, Corsa. I don't know. Are they there too? Uh, they're not supercharged. They're muffler or exhaust. Why the fuck are you still in California? Give me a, an example. Justify staying in California. Maybe I understand that you can't afford to move. I can't afford to move. It's going to cost me millions of dollars to move. I understand that. But why do you stay besides that? If it's too expensive to move? Okay, I get it. I, at least you can have a valid point. But any other reason than that, you should be gone from there. Should be gone from there. No idea why you stay in South, South Cali. Missed the first 30. Guess I'll have to catch up, says the hot sauce. Got my Odin kid in four weeks. All made in USA by Magnuson. Way better than gay overrated Whipple and got it quick. Whoa! Joey G going in like Mike Tyson. Holy you can't touch shit. me. You're not man enough. He I eat your ass on the live, you bitch. Wow. Fuck you, you hoe. He just Come went in, in my Whipple. face. Fuck you, ass for that. Everybody. Hey, Whipple. get the oh, fuck out of here because damn. I'm, I'm going to fuck you out right oh, now, motherfucker. God, you got to block that oh, shit. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, Don't rub on that. Oh, you block that. Fuck. You understand? That's alpaca. That's $25,000 alpaca. He said fuck Whipple. You block that shit. You don't rub them. Put the club soda on there. My nigga. <laughs> he just went in on everybody Damn Joey G is a G Don't fuck with Joey G Clunkerton is here, second shift racing um, Yes sir, actually left Roush And with national speed right now Interesting David Clunkerton You should have you should have got me one of those variable Exhaust shits before you left there um, Sucks that you're not there anymore um, But I'm sure you had your reasons But wherever you end up I'm sure that they have a valuable person in you that guy is so legit that is the guy that would david clunkerton is probably the only guy i want to talk about ls shit with like i'd love to interview him and go hey let's talk real because he used to work for vengeance racing we all know vengeance racing so i'd love to talk about how much power a stock ls3 makes how much power how what it takes to make it go this and this and that you know, when they started fucking with Coyotes, did it blow their minds that they could just throw a boost in it and make a thousand? You know, I want to talk to him 
in depth one day, one day, way in the future. So we'll see if that happens. Even if it's through Zoom or something, I need to get him on the horn because he is very knowledgeable and a nice guy. There's a ton of performance racing companies in California. I don't know why. They probably have been in California for years due to the port location. Probably super expensive to move and set up logistics again. Alex, do you know when the ultimate headers are going to come out with some for the S197? I don't think they are because the market is saturated there. Sounds like he done got gapped by a Whipple. <laughs> David Clark just says, yes, sir. That's me. Actually, I already got that. already got that. already got that. Borla is in Tennessee. And from what I see, they don't have far out back orders. Nixon Tarpia says all those parts manufacturers should take examples from Tesla and get the fuck out out of California. By the way, Nixon Tarpia, I got some 1650s. I want to trade for 1440s on the Fairmont. So I'll be hitting you up to get some 1440s. FIC are the people that are the only injectors that are my vehicles. Cabracha. Um, Whipple Nut Rider. Bing bong. Fuck your life. Oh, Alex got the question for you. What do you think is the lightest boost application kit is? Not talking about nitrous at all. Uh, probably a centrifugal because you don't have fluid. A Whipple, a TVS, whether it be Roush or Odin or uh, Loki or Iron Man or the Hulk or fucking Scarlet Witch or I don't know what the fuck their names are on their blowers now. What the fuck is wrong with people? Anyway, I think a Paxton or a, or a uh, uh, Vortec. No fluid. You have a centrifugal, a little bracket, uh, air to air intercooler and some pipes. The Whipple, you have a very big heavy intercooler. <laughs> you have a very big head unit. You have an air to water intercooler system with a pump and about a couple of gallons of fluid. So I think the lightest one is a centrifugal. Uh, let's do it. Shoot you a message. Yes, sir. David Clunkerton. I'll try to get something set up on Zoom. And not Zoom, but maybe Restream, and um, we'll exchange numbers, and I'll see if I can get you locked in for about an hour. I will pay you for your time, and I know you probably say no, no, no. I will pay you for your time. I want to make sure that, you know, because we're gonna talk about everything: bitches, hoes. We're gonna. It's not just car, 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 car. It's gonna be like LS, LS, LS. How many times have you got your dick sucked by LS groupies? You know, shit like that. Even though Cali's gay with carbon smog, there's a ton of guys here that just want to go fast. So all these manufacturers want to be close to their customers. I get that. I get that 100%. Um, ORT's performance. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you're happy with him, see ya. Um, thanks for the chance to win the cookies, Alex. Shout out to all the 14 who like my shit. You are the real ones. You're going to love those fucking cookies. You're going to absolutely love those cookies. Deceptive's Garage says, California's trying everything to keep people. I think they recently added a new law saying if you sell a house within 10 years of leaving California, they'll tax you on it. Oh, my God. I'd leave because of that. Long Two Petters is located in South Carolina. Stainless Works in Northeast Ohio. Love that. Three months to go until I'm prego, says David Parks. Just got out of work. Bumping in. Dropping that like. Lance Lip Pig. What a name. Thank you, sir. I run Whipple Gen 5 on a Frankenstein Coyote, but had a friend who does road racing ask. I appreciate the advice. You got it, sir. Pa Patrick David says, did do stand it up. I do stand up. I mean, what are you going to do? Looking to have a stroker built, says Christian Colon. It's Cologne. Um, a stroker built for your 15 GT builder suggesting 12 to 5 to 1 for 93 octane. Will this compression ratio work in your experience? Gracias. Who the fuck's building it? I don't know any company that has built a stroker kit on a Coyote yet. I want to know who the fuck. If it's like, you know, Papi Chulo Racing or something, I'm like, bro, we got to talk. <laughs> hey, Wheeler says, love my Whipple. Thanks for awesome tunes. Mobile detailing channel. Thank you very much. Now wait, suck dick. You'd be surprised how many things are made in America. Products when they're just assembled here and sourced from overseas. Threshold is like 35-40% of internals made here to claim made in U.S. Are you in China? Where the fuck are you? You say here like as, as if we know where you're at. Now we suck dick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I love you. I love you. Look, I love I make it. Look, if you know, if you know my personality, if I like you, I'm making fun of you. If I treat you with respect, I probably think you're a piece of shit. Real a nation. Um, have a good weekend, man. Still waiting on my hot rod to get the engine installed at the dealership. Should be ready next week. I can borrow. Can I borrow the Cobra? Um, I don't have a Cobra. I have a GT500. Hey, Alex. Um, even though I'm an LS queer, can I get a follow back on IG? Hit me up again there, because I, 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 
I get I get lost when I get um requests. Alex, is Florida worth leaving Long Island for? Fuck yeah, fuck your life. Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Are you, de okay, depends where in Florida. I'm gonna be fucking dead ass. Palm Beach County is where it's at. I've been to shit ass county. I've been a uh, I've been a uh, date you know uh, Dade, um, Broward, St. Lucie. Orlando, which is Puerto Rico, Jacksonville, Gainesville, Palm Beach County is where it's at, in my opinion. So if you can't get to Palm Beach County, I'd really start visiting those places. If you like a yee yee, podunk kind of country shit, Jacksonville is your jam. If you like Puerto Ricans with Puerto Rican flags on the hood um, and potential drive-bys, did you see the video on Facebook of poor motherfuckers drove... They slid up on some Puerto Ricans in some bodega or something, and they split act them. I was like, oh my God. No, thank you. <clears throat> okay, Gallo Bravo likes it, and CT Frank is laughing. Um, can you give me a rundown on your battery setup in the GT500? Ground from battery straight to block, power to starter, distribution post. Why in the hell? It's stock. Jeremy Slavin, it's exactly like it is stock. Nothing fancy. Dropping a like, I'll rewatch later. I ordered a V7 JTB gym blower from what I see online guys on V3s with 3.6 pulleys. E85 are touching about 800 horsepower. Would the V7 make the same on the same pulley? E85 probably, maybe. But I think that thing is really made to sing, like a 20% lower in a fucking 3.3. Make, you know, make a thousand. So I think that head unit specifically is designed for more, you know, for higher power. Whereas 3.6 E85 guys, yeah, they're making close to 800. I want to run a 3.3 in my shit all the time, but I know that's difficult because it's a V3 and you can over spin the slinger, whatever the fuck that means. Glad to hear what the fuck happened to my tuner yesterday. I don't know where my tuner left the company and started his own buzz. What? What, did, what am I missing here? <laughs> am I missing something? I, I, <laughs> it's funny shit. Um, oh man, you treat, you treat me with respect, the hot sauce. <laughs> I don't know you though. Um, the spring wanted, okay, okay, okay. Oh my God. VMP canned tune nailed it on my Gen 3 build. Canned tune. This spring wanted, this this spring wanted a Whipple, 26 week lead. Ordered my VMP Odin, three week lead. Time, it done. I'm rolling out. Bing bong, you're way out of Long Island. Exactly. First time catching the live stream. Funny as shit. Thank you, Eric. 202006. Boxy Luxury says, the nice weather in Southern California is great motivation because the certain work doesn't stop. Could you look at that as the same as Florida? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Florida, we work 365. There is no such thing as winter. There is no such thing as an off season. There is no such thing as a, ah, we can't do shit for three months, so we're just going to chill the fuck out. We work nonstop here. Nonstop. There is no snow days. Hurricane rolls through. They're fucking ready to kick back, kick ass a day later. You know, it's not a problem. So it's a different mindset than from a Northeast state, 100%. I just want to say thank you for both channels. Says not line of lads, guys. If you missed TDC yesterday... I laughed my fucking ass off. I'm at the gym. I went to the gym at five in the morning today. That's why I'm tired, I think. And I'm lifting and I'm listening back to the show to see if I have any mistakes or anything like that. And I am losing my mind laughing like a child. So I understand what you guys, because I don't realize what I'm saying it in the moment. I have to listen back and go, wow, I am an absolute retard. What's up, little man? Little Tony got the pink eye. <laughs> Two step like the button because I didn't have a bump box that no I was talking about Tracy Miller, um, Brandon Christopherson or Christopherson Christopherson, that drive was insane. They even came back to finish them off, dude. I wish I could play it, but it'll get get it'll get it'll get taken off. There's like four guys hanging out in front of like a shop with masks on, chilling. Ba -ba 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 -ba, everything's good. Then you hear a car drove by, brap, drop all of them. Didn't drop one or two, dropped all of them, meaning they got shots in. Then they came back and finished them off point blank. Oh my God. Unbelievable video on, on fucking Facebook, bro. Unbelievable. Uh, it gave me that queasy feeling, you know? Um, yo, Alex, how's Vero Beach? Thinking of taking a vacay there in my timeshare. There ain't shit there, but good looking women. Vero Beach, for whatever reason, is a place where good looking women start their Florida venture. Then they go to Palm Beach County. Then they end up in Dade County getting fucking rammed on a midnight express. Just, I mean, they, they start from, they, they, they begin, they start from being a, I don't know, they work in like a, the healthcare field in Vero. And then they make their way down to 
Dade and there. Oh yeah, the guy in the boat. Oh, oh, I'm telling you, that's how they end up. So yeah, you're not going to see much there. <laughs> TDC was great last night. Thank you, Angel H. Alex, can you tune my G wagon? <laughs> <laughs> the G wagon. Steed of Lowering Springs, Ford Mobile Performance. Figured out my fueling issue on the nitrous Alex. The fuel so it blew out the seat, causing no fuel to flow through. 150 dry shot. Oh my God. Oh my God. 4.6 crisp. Now, Weed Salik says, Washington. <laughs> Chicago before here. <laughs> he's like, he's like, fuck you, man. I speak like a normal American. Um, Fortune 500 supply chain, junkie Mr. Flowers. Got it. Um, blondes are brunettes. Okay, I'll have to watch TVC since I missed it last night. Um, Jeremy Slavin says, so your battery's in the front, mine's in the back. Bought it that way. Getting hot start. Ground from battery to chassis. Power to distribution post. Power disperses from there. Blowing fuses. Mine's in the stock location. I need weight in the front because that bitch likes to do wheelies. I live in the Lakewood Park, in Lakewood Park, which is basically Vero Beach. We love it here. Okay, so you must like it on the quieter side. There ain't shit going on above Port St. Lucie. Like there's nothing going on. Want to get tuned by you, but need to figure it out first. Jeremy Slavin, I'm sorry. I don't have much insight on, on that. I am very weak on electrical stuff. Very weak. I'm just like, I don't know. I look at the wires. I'm like, oh, put them together. Fuck it. Now what happens? <laughs> I'm really weak on that shit. Second shift racing says, before you smash, do you bump in? Bump in. Um, Yes, you do a bump in. You don't just bottom out on the nuts. You bump in poquito. Petit, poquito. Yeah, you get the... La cabeza un poquito moja, then you and you're good. You know what I'm saying? Um, awesome. Uh, for two twenty a week on the timeshare, gonna get a rental and drive south to hang. There you go. Mini bike madman, do your thing. Go to Vero. It's a nice spot, quiet. But if you want to like check out really bougie shit, hit up Palm Beach Gardens. Hit up not Wellington. Wellington's just fucking full of like horse motherfuckers. Um, Fort Lauderdale, uh, Atlantic Avenue and Del Rey. It's cool to hang out, but don't want to live there. And the further south you go, the bougier it gets closer to the water. And if you make it to Miami, you're just going to be like heading on, on a swivel. There's a lot of cool shit to see. Would you want to live there? Absolutely not. Is it cool to see? Yes, absolutely. There's a casino down there, the Hard Rock Casino with a big stupid guitar. Have you guys seen that big stupid guitar? that the hard rock has and it has like a laser light show so you're staring at it and on the highway and on the turnpike you're about to crash into it um hard rock the guitar hotel there you go guitar hotel videos and at night it's lit up really cool you know um let me see you turn off the volume don't my god cookies up there i like it Oh my God, the intro. Fuck me. Yes, if you guys want to head down and uh, check out the Hard Rock, they have a, they literally have a hotel shaped like a casino. I'm sorry, shaped like a casino. I'm so stupid. Shaped like a guitar. Uh, a hotel slash casino shaped like a guitar. So every single time I drive by the motherfucker, I'm like staring at it and then I'm almost rear ending somebody in front. Look at the pool. Look at the lazy river. Bro, I'll get you. I, I guarantee there's some Russian hookers you can link up with there, bro. You can get your dick sucked. You can get fucking drug, you know, just, some drive by might happen. You might just get split act up against shit. But it's a it's a cool spot and it's, it's bougie. It's kind of like um neat. And we take it for granted when we live down here. We totally take it for granted because we're next to it all the time. But, you know, it's, it's a cool thing to do while you're down here for sure. God damn it. Uh, oh yeah, I was looking at Palm Beach, just looking to have a good week, uh, away from Massachusetts. Get that. I get that hundred percent. When you were a VMP, what was the most you ever saw a stock blower five, four dyno at? Um, it never touched 600 stock blower M122. <laughs> never touched 600. Maybe, maybe if it did, it was just barely over that. Any good conspiracies to talk about? No, no conspiracies here. Redheads. Um, I stayed at the Hard Rock Hotel. Thought it was really nice place for the money. Nice. Damn, that's balling. It's a cool little spot. Look, there's a lot of cool things. If you look up things like um, the cams, like there's a lot of cams like uh, uh, Miami Beach Cam. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Right? The Miami Beach Cam. Uh, see Miami Beach Camp, webcams, and it's just people like on Lincoln Road. You can get down to Lincoln Road. It's a nice spot. You can walk around. Do they have Lincoln Road? Yeah, Lincoln Road is very bougie, okay? Lincoln Road is like um, basically like an outside mall, for lack of a better word, 
right? Um, and if you go there, you're going to have a good time. You could go to Biscayne Bay, have a good time down there, check, check out a whole bunch of shit. Um, you can go to actual Miami beach, which is this guy right here, like the actual beach, but the drive, it's cool to watch, but it's not my scene. It's just not my scene. And, and you can see the difference here in what, you know, what people consider, you know, what like people head down and they want to go to Miami beach, but then I'm the kind of guy that wants to go to the, um, look at that's beautiful. That's really pretty. Um, and where, where Jupiter, Jupiter inlet cam. So the Jupiter Inlet webcam, um, I remember showing like the LUNs all the time. I'm like, y'all could be down here. Look at the ice blue water that's at the Jupiter Inlet. It's always been beautiful and ice blue. And I always want I always wanted to live near it, you know. And there's a big inlet right there that big badass boats come in and out of. And this is called Dubois Park. So you go to Dubois Park, hang out. They've got a little um, they have a little uh area there for kids to play in. But dude, this is such a nice, I love, love, love this area. I go there, walk around, have a good time. The water's ice blue, not like that Orlando area, Cocoa Beach, New Smyrna Beach, shit ass bullshit, green, black, nasty, brackish bullshit. Um, it's pretty goddamn legit if you ask me. So yeah, that's why I live down here. Palm Beach County is the shit in my opinion. Um, spend a week at the beach in Jupiter. Can't go wrong with that. Nixon Tarpa, he knows the deal. Damn, no idea. That was there. Exactly. My buddy lives by the Hard Rock Steakhouse was closed when I was in town too. What's up, bitch? Preferred turbo manufacturer, uh, Garrett. I'm a Garrett guy. I don't know. I, we're talking just compressors, right? Not precision because precision is like this G, like the Chevy 350 of turbos. People say they're the best. No, they're the Chevy 350 of turbo. There's just a lot of them and they have a different, a lot of different configurations. I like Garrett. I'm a Garrett guy or Borg Warner. Alex, how much can a stock block Coyote make if really pushed? If uh, I think they've made a thousand in the past a lot, yes, about a thousand. I wouldn't, I wouldn't really stretch it past that much. You're talking about the see when people say stock block Coyote, Joel Steele has a stock block Coyote. It's sleeved, but the block is stock. So you need to be very specific about what you say. I hit all those spots, says Angel H. Exactly. Can you please talk more about turbo back pressure and valve float issues you run into? Nope, I will not. <laughs> yeah, for sure, doing that. Just looking for good eats. Ice blue water is a must. I like going to Dubois Park. Me too. I love it there. Alex, who do you recommend to port Edelbrock to port Edelbrock like yours? Only one person. That would be Greg Kong. Greg Key is saying Greg Kong, Kong Performance. Greg Kong ported my Edelbrock. That's the guy to go to. Um, is Jupiter Beach usually go to? Um, yeah, it, uh, it's called Juno Beach, not Jupiter Beach. It's called Juno Beach, and Juno Beach extends all the way to Dubois Park, technically. Nice water reminds me of Guam. <laughs> okay, that works. I'm I'm at 591 wheel with 12 GT500 stock blower with a clogged fuel filter. All the cooling goodies. I heat soak like a motherfucker. Fastest passes a 1084, 93 octane. Can't go 85 before the four innovations injector and blower. That's that's impressive. Very impressive, Jeremy Slavin. Will will we have TDC tonight? No, I had one yesterday. Zona rotor turbos, but Garrett and Borg Warner. There you go. Would would be wasting my time if I tried too much with if i tried to without that stuff i've only been to destin beaches are dope destin the beaches are dope nothing else is dope in destin except probably the meth you can get two blocks from the beach destin beaches are beautiful but the problem with destin beaches that's all you can do there seem like daytona beach remember when people like oh daytona 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 then you get there and you take a left if you're going south you take a left onto off of i-95 into daytona beach and you're like there's a lot of 7-Elevens here. There's a lot of, uh, it's a little dark in this neighborhood, huh? Wow, there's a lot of white trash looking motherfuckers, huh? Maybe the beach is lit. Oh, you can drive your car on the beach. That's it. That's it. That's the only reason if you want to go to Daytona Beach is to drive your car on the beach and get the fuck out of there or I'm, I'm going to fuck you out right now, motherfucker. Miss the show, but stop by to hit the like. RPM builds a coyote stroker. Do you think 12 to 5 will be fine for street? 93 octane? No. Nope. I'd keep it no higher than 12 to 1, in my opinion. I gotta be able to run 93 for some classes I run. Oh, you, you didn't. Okay. 20 degrees of timing. Good, dude. High compression and pump gas that's in that's wildly inconsistent. Pump gas station to gas station. I wouldn't play that game. Unless you're looking to say, fuck it. Let me just build it. And if it detonates, who gives a shit? Okay. I understand people that do that where they're like, I don't care. It's built. Motor's not going to blow up. I'm good. I'm like, all right, brother. It'll rattle the piston in the bore, but good luck to you. Garrett, don't make the power they claim or rated. They're reliable, but precision makes the most power. Sure. Whatever he says. If you look closely, you can tell that Alex is standing up. <laughs> I mean, you can't tell I'm standing up. 
Packs in a Whipple stage two for roll racing on a 19, 810. Either works fine. Either works fine. The Whipple's going to have more nut down low. Paxton's going to have way more up top. Positive displacement blowers. Is it smart to run an Alki kit and an ice tank here in Florida? I don't mind an Alki kit to combat IAT issues. But then you're going to run it through the rotor. I wish you can directly inject it into the fucking cylinders or, you know, pre post rotor, pre intercooler. Hopefully my YouTube's slow, only showing 36 likes. Yeah, there's 225 likes here, 249 viewers. You see someone else got their GT500 together. Dude put a full video of his FFE with license plate on it. Now you get it. Now you get why I personally don't want nothing to do with dude. Alejandro Flores, forget Lun. Lun can speak for themselves. Alejandro Flores wants nothing to do with motherfuckers that are tone deaf like that. Tone deaf. Thoughts on JPC Racing Engines? Never really had an issue or never heard good or bad because it's FFRE. Um, oh my God. RPG, Keith Ray. That's what we use. Uh, Bullseye makes good turbos as well. So second shift racing. That's true. I'm from Vero Beach. You got to you got to go to the beach side. I'm, I'll pass on that. Um, <laughs> just got back from Daytona. Just got an Airbnb at the beach and drank all weekend. We weren't at the Boomer Car Show. It was fun. Couch and touch the wall. Like it. Do you think that if when manufacturers start reverting cars to stock tubes, they might let some companies buy into becoming an authorized performance tune for them? <sighs> Do you think that if when manufacturers start reverting cars to stock tubes, they might let some companies buy into becoming an authorized performance tune for them. Uh, I know he means tunes, but I still don't know what the fuck he's trying to get at. Um, hard to take staying mode seriously. Uh, Y'all watch him. Y'all watch him. The fact that you know what he's up to, he's winning because y'all watch him. So, hey, he's laughing all the way to the bank and you guys are going, can you imagine this guy's a fucking idiot? And I'm like, you know why I can't imagine? Because I don't know what's going on in his life. I don't know what's going on in any of the motherfuckers' lives. Why? I don't watch them. I don't care what they do. I have no stake in that game. Just like I don't watch Cletus because he's going to, I don't know, he's going to jump off a of Grand Canyon. Super Dave. I'm going to call him Super Dave. He's Super Dave. Because I guarantee, guys, once the car stuff starts to slow down, he's going to have to do crazier and crazier shit to get the likes up again. You'll see. Um, sup Alex driven lifestyle. I, I know how you feel about the Shelby guys, but what about your opinion on Shelby super Baja if price isn't an object? I don't like anything Shelby that isn't a 60 something Cobra. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Shelby to me is just a company that puts body kits on cars and prepackaged Whipple kits and they're done. There's no engineering. There's nothing wild. There's nothing innovative. There's nothing Shelby about Shelby. Do you know what I mean? There's nothing Shelby about Shelby. Um, do you recommend an oil catch can? I do. Uh, Fat House Fab has the most baller catch cans on the planet. I just fast forward through his videos, but it doesn't matter. You get a view, you get a like. Uh, dang, I got here. Can you start over? Says Kyle Ren. Best Fox Coyote Twin Turbo Kit Manufacturer. I think the only one is CG Fab, no? And doesn't Motion Raceworks have a uh, Coyote Swap um, Turbo Kit? I don't know, maybe. But I know CG Fab makes it. Super Cleat. <laughs> Paul Monaco says, yo, yo, two bald tires says 10 speeds with stock trans and boost. What are you seeing as far as when they start falling rather quickly? 800 or so Jake today, this morning, beat a C6 Corvette and a new Supra with a tune and an intake by buses at 12 PSI, which is about 790 to 800 wheel. And that truck is living. He called me in the morning. He goes, dude, I just walked the shit out of these two cars and he ain't one to lie. And I'm like, that's pretty fucking awesome. He's having a bunch of fun. So the trans is obviously living a very good life at 800 wheel in a 4,800 pound truck, twin turbo. So seems to be okay there. Think dude was asking if you think there'll be more Roush, Celine, et cetera, factory back companies. Wow. Chase M. Don't you love it? How you can just put a sentence together and make sense. Yes. I think a lot of people will end up going that route. If they want to go fast, it has to be like given the, uh, seal of approval by the EPA and Ford and Chevy. Basically, Ford, Chevy, and Dodge prepackaged cars that can go out like a Roush, like a Celine, like a like a uh, what do you call it? A um, contractor, like a Roush, to be able to go. Okay, if you want 650 horsepower, the only way you can do it is through Roush. You can't do it through Ford anymore. 
think dude already got that saw that video made me sick to my stomach how much would it be for a boost application tune for a returning customer 500 bucks plus 500 bucks plus 500 bucks people watch him because they want to win a car don't even know see i don't even know i don't even know that that's a thing that's that's how much i don't care had a ported 20 gt500 on a weld on a weld what well, would think that in the quarter mouth has got a timing chain recall J jeremy jeremy you, you get into the weeds man i love you holy shit um Best turbo boost controller, thoughts on CO2. CO2 is good if you don't want to uh, reference it from manifold. And if you want to go above what your spring pressure can generate, meaning if you have six pound springs, the most boost you can get out of it is at about 18. But if you want to make 30 and have a, a small spring in the gate, CO2 is your huckleberry. Um, Black Cat 1478 says, remember you said one day Ford plans to use a sync to phone home and that revert tunes back to stock. So you think they would let companies like Lund buy into being a Ford performance dealer? Oh yeah, no, they will never do that. Never, ever, ever do that. Little man probably peed because he did that walk of shame. He went out and went right back in and he's giving me that look. So I bet you he peed out there or shit. I'd rather he shit easy to pick up. Uh, someone else is mopping up people on low boost lung sauce. What are you bringing to this channel in 2022 or your plans? Come on, stop it. Sorry to type this in a traffic. Yeah, don't don't type if you're in traffic. There's, <laughs> I don't know why people, <laughs> let me just get this in. Dude, you can do it in the comments after the video uploads. Um, Nixon Tarpy says, I'm looking to get a short block this year. Do you think I should just get an OEM Gen 3 short block or would you be worth getting an RPG level 2 short block? Depends on how much power you want to make, Nick. If you want to make 800 consistently, Gen 2 or Gen 3 short block is more than enough. But then you got to get Gen 2 heads, not Gen 1 heads. So then you got to source heads too. So you basically got to get a Gen 3 short block, Gen 2 heads, and then GT500 gaskets and it should work. Wouldn't that be ironic if a company that that the EPA rated like Lund got affiliated with Ford. I don't think that'll ever happen. We've tried. I don't know. I, I don't, they're just not on board for cool shit like that. I'm looking to get a short block this year. I already got that. Wouldn't be, I already got that. I already got that. And ARX DML. Okay. I'm out of here. I'm fucking long. Holy shit. Stop. Stop keeping me over. One hour is more than enough. Oh my God. All right. Cause I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Maybe I'll be on the other channel tomorrow night. Maybe not. Depends on what, what I got going on during the day, but I'll definitely be on the peasant chat 930 AM a.m. Sunday morning here. No paid uh, questions will be allowed. Just talking to the poor people about dumb shit. The hot sauce says, Alex, I plan to build King Daddy NA. How can I hide the supercharger so I make money? All right. That'll be the last comment. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys Sunday, 9.30 a.m. on the Peasant Chat and maybe you other guys on Saturday night, depending on what I got going on. Keep an eye on the community tab or the scheduling. I'll try to give you the best heads up possible. All right, guys, have a great weekend. I'm done this fucking week. I'm tired. I'm beat. I got to get back to like relaxing so I can come back fresh Monday and send out more flex tunes. Have a good one, guys. Have a great weekend.